Hey there folks, welcome back. Would you want to work at a job where you're forced to comply with the company's political and social agendas? Forced to represent their personal opinions or what they want the public to believe their opinions are? Since most of these companies, I'm pretty sure, the people that work in them and for them do not give a damn about these causes, but they have to pretend like they do because of the court of public opinion. And I think this is an interesting point, and this is coming out of Arkansas right now, okay, with the whole Kroger, Kroger being like the largest supermarket chain in the United States. If you had a personal opinion and you tried to state it anywhere, you would get in trouble for it. You wore a t-shirt that said, uh, whatever on it, you know, uh, vote for Trump, that's a good one, and you brought that to work, they would make you take that off, or you could lose your job. If you wore that to school, you're screwed. You know, public schools are the worst for this kind of thing. But basically, in Arkansas right now, this is surfacing, and it could expand into a larger lawsuit. And it's a, a, barely a blip in the news. But there's employees of Kroger that have lost their jobs, and they cite the reason for being the fact that they refuse to wear the rainbow apron. That Kroger, so that Ro Kroger can pretend to be down with LGBTQ or whatever. They're, we're showing solidarity, so you have to wear this. And they're like, I don't want to wear this. And they lost their jobs. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read the news story here. And it says, The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, in charge of enforcing anti-workplace discrimination laws, filed the suit this week on behalf of ex-workers. I'm not going to name the workers, but they do have names here. On behalf of ex-workers who said they were fired when the company implemented a new dress code that included an apron with a rainbow heart on it. Kroger, the country's largest supermarket chain, allegedly denied the requests and retaliated against them by disciplining them and ultimately firing them. And the company did not, and it goes on to say, the company did not discharge other employees who simply declined to wear the new apron or those who covered the heart emblem without requesting religious accommodations, claiming they were also in violation of the dress code. And it goes on to say the EEOC filed the suit in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Arkansas on Monday, alleging conduct that violates the Title VII, a part of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, that prohibits workplace discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, and national origin. And this is a quote here from... Uh, Delner Franklin Thomas, who is the district director of the EEOC, and it says companies have an obligation under the Title VII to consider requests for religious accommodations, and it is illegal to terminate employees for requesting an accommodation for their religious beliefs. And the suit, the lawsuit, it seeks basically back pay and, and compensatory damages it says as well as an injunction against further discrimination so it doesn't sound like they're actually asking for a whole hell of a lot these people aren't necessarily looking for a payday which to me lends a little credibility to it because when people come up with these crazy lawsuits and they want like big dollars and they're looking for a settlement i think they're full of crap because people will sue anybody for anything these people they just want basically their back pay and and for kroger to say we won't do that again. Uh, <laughs> I think that's reasonable if that's all it is. And that reminds me of Starbucks now. Because Starbucks has that whole thing with the Black Lives Matter t-shirts. And there's a little um, misunderstanding with that also. Because a lot of people think Starbucks is going to force their employees to wear it. Not officially. And I'll read you a blurb from that. It says, Starbucks is creating its own Black Lives Matter shirt for employees to wear if they choose. The move comes after the coffee chain reportedly banned employees from wearing Black Lives Matter gear. Now, here's what I had said before. If you have your own political or social point that you want to make, the company will stop you. Okay? They'll shut you down. Because they don't want you doing that. But if they have an agenda, they'll try to force you to comply with it. And that's a violation of your rights. And it goes on to say in this article, the t-shirt depicts protest signs with phrases that include Black Lives Matter, Speak Up, and Time for Change. One sign shows a raised black fist. 
It's not a moment, it's a movement, the t-shirt reads. And the reason that they're doing this is because Starbucks was challenged, all right? In a rare moment of maybe integrity, Starbucks decided not to stick its nose into the social and political arena and got attacked for it because activists know Starbucks management is weak and that if you push them, they'll fold up. It's as simple as that. So Starbucks, in their weakness, starts printing off these t-shirts to give to employees to neutralize that situation so that they can't have the finger pointed at them by these activists and be pestered by them. And to pay close attention to that statement where if they choose, and I kind of scoffed at it a little bit, and the reason is because I can guarantee there's going to be a lot of peer pressure. There's going to be peer pressure from the uh, management, there's going to be peer pressure from corporate, peer pressure from other employees, and from the occasional offended customer. You know, because as they say, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Used to be the squeaky wheel got replaced, now it gets oiled. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, a person should have the right to refuse to be a vessel to to demonstrate someone else's concept of free speech. You shouldn't be their advertising platform. You know, a, a store uniform or a company uniform is one thing. But when they start putting slogans on it so that they can pretend to have a, a attachment to a social or a political agenda that's pushing it. I've said this before. I don't believe any of these people even believe it. I think that they either believe you all believe it, which most people don't, whatever the agenda is, it it doesn't have to necessarily be the LGBTQ thing. It could be any agenda. They think we all believe it or they want to peer pressure us into believing it. You know, if you tell a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. That sort of a concept. And employees in all walks of life are being bullied and intimidated by these companies in their desperate attempts to to pretend to care about something and to pretend to send a message of one form or another. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I think a lot of people are sick and tired of it. And I keep waiting for it to boil over to see what's going to happen. I mean, we're not too far away from everybody being forced to comply in one form or another, just like in public school. That's what public school does. You have zero choice in public school because you have no rights in public school. Something I'm always blowing the horn about. I go on and on about it because I've been, I've had too many attachments to public school. I've had to work with them with uh, juvenile justice and all these other places. And I'm really sick and tired of them. They've gotten worse and worse every single year. It's almost unrecognizable uh, as an institution from when I went to school. And it wasn't that great then. But you have no choice. And of course, that's because of in-loco parenting. Again, I invite you to look that up. In-loco, L-O-C-O, not local crazy, but loco meaning uh, in the Latin in place of. Your children are not your children when they're in public school. It belongs, your your kids belong to the state. And they can decide for them whatever they want, even if it violates constitutional rights. Your children have no rights in school. It's whatever they tell them. And they can push whatever political and social agendas they want, and tough shit if you don't like it. And that's wrong. That's wrong. You can't just uh, do a basic education. Nope. Nope. we got to indoctrinate your kids into some kind of a social uh, subculture. And... It doesn't work because you get a bunch of animals. Kids who don't know what anything is, who don't believe anything, who don't care about anything. It's not working. It's turning them into monsters. But um, it's being allowed to continue. Do you deprogram your kids when they get home? Uh, It it, it works both ways. They couldn't get away with as much as they are if parents didn't drop the ball somewhere. So what do you think about all of that? Do you, do you think that these people should have a right to refuse to wear an apron? Do you think you should have the right to refuse to wear a certain t-shirt? 
I mean, like I said, if you have a standard Kroger uniform, that should be enough. Why have I got to be a billboard for your political agendas? I don't agree with that at all. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you get where I'm coming from. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. All that good stuff. Check out some of the other videos. You may find something you like. I hope you do. If you wanted to help the channel out, there are links for that down below as well. Every little bit helps, and I sure do appreciate it. And what more can I say but stay tuned, folks, because there is more to come.